Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print 3D channel. Simplify 3D has updated their awesome slicing software for 3D printing to version 4.1. And today we're going to talk about, and I'm going to show you, some of those updates, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back, and thank you for joining me here on the Print 3D channel. As I was saying in the introduction, Simplify 3D has updated their software to version 4.1. It's included some really cool updates and we're going to talk about those today. The first thing I want to say though is thank you to Simplify 3D for sending over this software before the release so we could do some testing and prepare a video for you guys. So thank you Simplify 3D. And for a full list of features that were updated in this version, I'll put a link down in the description to the release notes. Now they do have quite a lot of improvements that have been done, but they're only highlighting a few of these improvements on their webpage. You can see all those down in the description and you can check it out. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the multi-material or multi-color printing update to the software. Now you can add up to six extruders and that's pretty cool, especially if you have some sort of multi-color or multi-material add-on to your 3D printer, or if you have a multi-color printer. They've also updated the Prime Tower and Ooze Shield and the Prime Tower, which I'm calling the Prime Block, is now dynamically constructed to save on filament, print time, and make sure your extruder is clean of the previous color before it goes on printing. This is a huge and significant update to the software, and I think anybody using any kind of multi-material or multi-color 3D printing is going to really appreciate this. Now the samples that we have for you today are printed on the GTEC A10M, and we actually have a color mixing printer, but I've been able to get out some really great two-color prints. Now we did use the old Prime Tower on the previous print, which is the dice print, which I'm showing you now. And we used the new version, which includes the Prime Block, which is actually two towers next to each other, constructed dynamically, so they only use the right amount of filament at the right time. I think this is a really significant update. And as you can see by the prints, they've come out pretty clean and I'm really happy with the results. And as you can see, that Prime Block is dynamically constructed, so the colors are separate when they need to be separate. And when you're only printing a single color for a multiple amount of layers, it crosses over and connects the two blocks. Like I said before, this is a significant upgrade to the software, especially if you're using multicolor or multi-material in your 3D printing. And I'm really excited about it because I have a color mixing printer that I can use as a two-color printer, and I have a lot of models that I really want to print with this new version of Simplify 3D. The next update we're going to talk about is the print time improvements or print time estimates. Now I know this is a hot button topic on social media, and I can tell you that the print time estimates have improved greatly. The two color models that we printed were within two or three minutes of their actual estimated time, and I think that's pretty great. The longer print, which was about seven hours and 45 minutes, I believe, estimated in Simplify 3D, which is this print here, took about eight hours and 10 minutes, and that's a really good estimate difference. Now I do plan on doing some longer prints with more models on the build plate, because I know that'll increase the print time and may increase the estimated time. And I'll update those on social media and let you guys know how those turn out. But the smaller models that we printed were all within two or three minutes. At the most, they were about seven to eight minutes over the estimated time. Now we are doing prints that only were an hour and a half. Some were only 29 minutes. So even though there's only a couple minutes difference on those, it's still a great improvement of the, of the previous version where the print time estimates were off by 10 to 20%. So I think this is a significant improvement over the previous version, and I'm anxious to really test out these print time estimate improvements. Okay, so those are the two significant updates according to Simplify 3D if you've gone to the website and looked at the web page for the new update. In the release notes, there's quite a list of things, as I said before, but we're only going to highlight a few of those. And these two, the multi-material update and the print time estimate, seem to be the ones that there were the significant updates to the software. Now there's some other features that have been updated in the software and we're going to talk about those next. Now if you use your printer for rapid prototyping or engineering of parts, the next feature update is going to be very helpful and that's the sequential printing updates. Now there's an avoidance detection. When you put two models on the build plate, whether they're multi-color, multi-material, or single color, the software is smart enough to avoid each of the parts during the printing, even if they are done sequentially. One of the other improvements is the raft. Now I'm not familiar with the raft settings, so I just used the default settings when I printed the parts for this demonstration. But now the raft settings, for if you have two different settings for each part, you know, one part has one setting, and one part has another setting, and in our example we did a different layer height for each of the parts, the raft will print independently for each part. As you can see, the first raft printed and then the part printed, once that part was done, it moved over into the clear area of the build plate, 
printed the raft, and then started printing the part. So now having independent raft printing is available in this new version of the software. And again, if you're using your printer for engineering or rapid prototyping purposes, where you want to do different settings for each of the parts and print them out all at the same time on your build plate, I think this is a significant upgrade. Now this next update to the software, while not featured as a significant update, in my opinion, is very significant, and that's smart bridging. Now the GMAX does an amazing job on its bridging, and if you use bridging as perimeters or perimeters as bridges in the software now, now there's a smart bridging feature that actually turns the direction of the bridges on the, pro the proper angle as it prints. Now what we did is we found this really cool gear and I printed it out using that setting. And as you can see, it does actually follow the, the direction of each of the spokes when it prints out the bridging areas, which is really, really great. And the print quality is much better than the previous version where it would just do whatever layer angle was on that layer for the bridging. And sometimes that would make a huge mess. Now with smart bridging, it's able to detect the angles and put down the proper bridging angles on all your prints especially if you're printing out objects like these where you want a smooth finish after the bridging has been completed and you don't want to use a lot of support material. Now we did use a little bit of support material to actually help stabilize the bridges, but the final results were actually very impressive. And like I said, I think this is a very significant upgrade and it should be featured at the top of the page. The next update to the software we're going to talk about is the custom part additions. Now what this is, is if you have multiple parts on the build plate that have different settings applied to each of the parts, and they're very close together, some of those parts would have settings drift over to the other parts. This has been fixed in this version of the software. Now you can crowd your build plate with multiple parts with multiple settings and not worry about settings from one part drifting over to the other because they're too close to each other. Now in the example that we did, we printed some OpenRCF1 parts where I printed one with a raft and one with support material and no raft and they're very small parts and they were close together and the settings didn't drift over to the other part and cause a problem. So this works perfectly. And I think this is also another significant update because there had been some issues before where people would crowd a lot of parts on the build plate, assign different settings to each of those parts, and because they were so close together, those settings would drift to other parts. So this has been fixed in this update of the software. Another update to the software is intelligent solid layers. And what this means is normally when you were printing out a part, it would add solid layers in wherever it thought it needed it. Now the part is examined by Simplify 3D and where two parts join together or two areas of a part join together, it won't add in those additional solid layers, but it'll also add in solid layers in the proper direction or proper angle to make sure the part is properly supported and still strong. Now this isn't a significant update, but I think it's an important update, especially if you're printing out parts for engineering, say you're building some robots, you wanna make sure all the parts have the same strength across the board I think this update will help improve those prints. It's something you may not notice in your everyday printing if you're not printing anything that requires strength or any kind of durability, but it is a significant update and it's good to see that this has been changed in the software. One of the last things that's been updated in this version of the software is the addition of 50 plus machines, including some machines from GTEC, Creality, Flashforge, and quite a few others. Again, check out the list down in the description for the release notes. You'll see those there. And if you've updated your software to the newest version, when you add a new printer, you should be able to see all the printers that have been added in, in this current version and this current update. And talking about those release notes, there have been a ton of bug fixes. There's so many, I can't even list them. I could scroll through them right here next to me, but you wouldn't even have time to read them because there's two pages of bug fixes on the release notes. That's quite a few. They've even answered quite a lot of bug fixes from the community that they have not listed in their list. But I think that's really great that they do listen to what we're saying. Maybe they don't respond on social media, but they are listening and they have addressed a lot of problems with the software from the previous version. And those are all, again, listed in the release notes in the link down in the description so you can read through every single one that they've done to the software. Well, that about wraps it up for this list of updates to the current version of Simplify 3D, now in version 4.1. I'm really anxious to try out some of this new multi-material updates, and I'm very curious about sequential printing. A huge shout out and thank you to Simplify 3D once again for sending over the pre-release of the software so we could test out some of these new features and I can share them with you guys. I hope you guys found this episode interesting and informative, and if you're looking for ways to support the channel, check out those affiliate links and all the other ways you can support the channel down in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel Comment, like, and share those videos, and I'll talk to you guys soon.